I like the way that we've got some lost edges here because the, the light got a little darker and the darks got lighter. You are about to discover something that is going to change your painting life forever. And there's nobody, nobody better to teach it than Mary Garish. Mary, what are you going to do today? Well, I'm going to teach a process that I would imagine that a lot of people haven't seen before. And it's basically the art of scumbling. Scumbling. Yes, which means I'm going to mix up an opaque tone of paint and totally cover the canvas. And so it should be very exciting. Usually when I do this in workshops, I get a big wow. So we'll keep our fingers crossed for today. Well, I'll bet you also get a big, you know, when they first see you do it, because it probably, you know, you put all that work into that beautiful painting and then all of a sudden, why are you doing this? Yeah, it, it is so much fun to see that reaction. So I won't be able to see it today, but I'll keep my fingers crossed that that's what we're doing. <laughs> Well, I'll be reading the comments as people join in and, and maybe talking about where people are coming in from. We've, we've got viewers from all over the world now. So why don't we get right to it? Let's get started. All right. All right. Terrific. Okay. So you want to move your camera in? What do you want to do? Oh, you're going to, oh, you want me to show an image, don't you? Yes. It's, it's, you can either show the image or it's the painting that I have on the easel. Well, let me show it first, a close up. Okay. All right, and now everybody's seeing it. Now we'll go back and you can talk about it. Okay, so I'll kind of scoot it in here a little bit. All right. Um, so this painting, the reason I wanted to show it is that I started this in a very playful way. It is, and th when I do that, it's usually... I'm looking to change things up. I'm like in a rut. I'm frustrated with my paintings or something. So I'm like, okay, I'm just going to play. So this surface is actually aluminum for those of you who have never painted on aluminum. And this is the product. It's called Alumicon and you can get it, you know, online from any of the big, uh, Mary. Yes. Is that, is that actually got an aluminum finish on it or is it got a panel on top of it? Uh, this is just the protection for the aluminum panel, and you just pull it off. It's got two sides. One side is very smooth, and the other side, which is the side I like, has a nice tooth to it. So when you get it, you just peel the plastic off, and you paint on the surface. So yeah. you can see it's a very reflective surface. Yeah, so it's gonna if you use transparent paint, it's going to really glow from behind. Absolutely. It's Oh, how exciting. It really is very exciting. And for those of you who haven't tried it, I would definitely buy at least, you know, three, four panels because, you know, it takes a while when you're using a new surface to really get the hang of it. So what I did with this when I started out, I didn't have any idea what I was going to do. I just wanted to play with paint. Uh, about a year ago, I'd been to a Larry Moore workshop on abstraction and uh, th that really kind of changed the way a lot of times I approach my paintings, um, trying to think much more abstractly. So with this painting, I decided I wanted to mix up a bunch of yellow tones and I used uh, Adobe and um, uh, Cad, Cad Yellow Light um, and uh, Transparent Red Oxide and Yellow Ochre, so really heavy on the yellows. And then uh, I added some wax to that, cold wax, which is a gambling product. And that just gives a lot of texture to the paint. And then I used my trusty brayer, which I learned to use at the Larry Moore workshop. And this is just a great way to kind of abstractly, you know, put in a lot of paint uh, pretty rapidly. And so it's, you know, you can't, you, you have to do big shapes. And so I was just putting in some abstract big shapes, some lights and darks. And then when I did that, I decided I was going to take saran wrap. And I put saran wrap on the painting, just kind of willy-nilly lifted it off. And then I went to the back of my studio and I started looking at the painting. It was initially horizontal. 
And I looked at it. I'm like, yeah, I don't really see any great patterns there or anything. So you had no reference photo. You had nothing in mind. You just wanted to see what would happen. Exactly. Ah, you know, ah, how fun. I was hoping for some kind of a revelation. Yeah. And so then I put it vertical and I started seeing tree patterns with really nice sculpted uh, sky holes and everything. And so I'm like, okay, so I'm going to go with, uh, you know, a tree painting. And then originally this was going to be a ground plane. And I decided to, it had from the saran wrap, it had so many nice different shapes and textures that I thought, oh gosh, we're going to go with the reflection into the water. And that's one of the, the things that I really like aluminum. It really helps to give that kind of reflective feel. Cool. Okay, so that being said, I just wanted to tell everybody that when you get to that point where you're feeling frustrated, you don't know what to do, just play. And so now I'm gonna go ahead and scumble a painting. I painted this painting specifically for this demo. Okay, I'm just gonna step in real quickly and uh, just say hi to everybody. Um, I'm Eric Rhodes, publisher of Fine Art Connoisseur and Plein Air Magazine. This is Chewy. Say hi, Chewy. Hello, Mary. And uh, today is day number 293. We started at the beginning of coronavirus quarantine, and here we are, 293. We're here every day at 12 noon, and we're here at every day at 3 p.m. giving samples of art instruction videos. All right, Mary, I've done my announcements now. Back to you. Okay. So, as I said, I painted this painting specifically so that I would uh, give you guys a good feel for what happens when you scumble a painting. So, I, there are a lot of things I like about this painting, but I made the sky color far too saturated, at least for my taste. Uh, some people might like more saturation. For this particular thing, I would like it to be moodier and... Um, so what the scumbling will do is it will bring the values closer together. So the darks will become lighter and the lights will become darker. Mary, will, question yeah. for you. Uh, it, if it, Do you typically try to accomplish what you want in the painting itself or do you always assume you're going to do scumbling? Oh, no. I, I don't scumble that often. Um, Probably the paintings I scumble more frequently are the ones that I'm trying to get a certain mood. Um, and then the second painting that I'm going to scumble, it's an ocean scene. And there's just no way I could get the same moody, silvery effect on the water without scumbling. I mean, there might be better artists out there that could. But me, I, I like to rely for different types of moods, should I say. Mary, um, there are no better artists than you. What can I say? <laughs> and, and by the way, I should mention to everybody that after you watch this, go over to the Plein Air podcast and listen to the podcast. Uh, Mary's story is fascinating. Well, thank you, Eric. I appreciate that. All right. Okay, so I'll get to scumbling. So Scumbling is with an opaque tone, which means, you know, you can't see through it as opposed to glazing, which is more transparent. So I'm, I've mixed up a tone. It's kind of a ochre orange tone. And I'm just going to totally, very quickly cover this canvas. Uh, you use a lot of liquid in with it. And the painting has to be totally dry. Otherwise, you're just going to get smear art. Okay. All right. And what is the surface that your uh, painting is on? Uh, this is linen on gator board. Okay. So, all right. Oh, my goodness. She's ruining it. No. <laughs> So you see, this is an awful lot of fun. And I would suggest that everybody out there, if you want to try it, get out your old canvases that you feel were failures and just play mixing up different tones and just covering the canvas and then see what kind of mood you've invoked.
Mary, I have a question. Yes. Somebody's making comments in your name. Somebody said under your name that good morning. Do you have somebody doing comments for you? No. <laughs> oh, that's weird. Because they're going to think this is pre-recorded. Oh, that's funny. Huh. Not at least not that I know of. Well, maybe maybe you have a secret admirer. Maybe, maybe there's another Mary Garish. Oh, there you go. Okay, so I pretty much got that covered. Okay, so that's a lot thicker than I would have ever guessed. Yeah, so now now's the fun part. It's kind of the revelation. You don't wear gloves? Oh, uh, sometimes I do. Uh, you're a former doctor. I thought for sure you'd be doing that. <laughs> I got tired of wearing them. <laughs> okay. So see what you do is you wipe... Like, I'm probably going to wipe more out in the light of this guy here. I'm just going to leave a very thin coat of it because I like that uh, very gray yellow sky up there. But yeah. so here, what you're going to get is you're going to get these warm and cool vibrations. And so see what that's done to our cloud there is it has harmonized it it has taken the darks it's made them just a, probably a half of value lighter and the lights it has made them just a little bit darker yeah so, and uh, you used a complementary color right because your clouds are purple yes was that the intent um no it wasn't uh it wasn't really the whole idea of the compliments it's just really where I wanted to take it. I really want to kind of like a, a orange haze over the cloud. Yeah. Now, you know so, what would have happened if you used purple? Purple, purple, purple. haze. Yeah, <laughs> that's Sorry, true. I, I'm going back to my Woodstock days. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to come back in with some warmer tones. Uh, Somebody so, asked a question. Could this be yeah. used with watercolor? Oh, you know what? I'm not really, I've never really used watercolor, but I would, I'm not sure. I'll, you, I'll bet, you know, it, it would be interesting if you wanted to try putting oil over watercolor to scumble an oil over that, you could probably create the effect that way. Somebody um, will know the answer in the comments. Yes, especially some of your watercolorists. So see, now I'm just going back in and I'm kind of redefining the highlights because, you know, you kind of lose some of them. Is that an Indian yellow? Uh, no, actually, it's cad orange and yellow ochre and white. <clears throat> okay. And so now as we get, get away from it, it's going to cool down a little bit, get more pinks instead of all the, uh, the oranges. Okay. I want to remind everybody to leave your questions, but also tell us where you're watching from, especially if you're outside of the U.S. And we have a prize today of a digital edition of Plein Air Magazine, a, a whole year subscription. And uh, so go ahead and put your comments in and you might win that prize. Also coming up, today is day 293. Coming up, we got a big celebration of 300 days. You don't want to miss that one. That's remarkable, Eric. Yes, thank you. That, it, I, I really intended to do this for two weeks. I thought we'd be in quarantine for two weeks. <laughs> well, I think we all thought that. And here we are almost a year later. Yep. Somebody says you can put a wash over a watercolor painting to change the main colors. Oh, well, that's good to know. Right. <clears throat> okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and kind of increase the darks because I've lost a lot of the darks in the foreground here. Okay. I want everybody to pay attention to how Mary's holding her brush. 
You want to talk about that? Yes. So um, it is not a pencil. And so, you know, if you hold it like this, you're going to choke up and you're not going to get really nice artistic strokes. So if you hold it more like a, a baton, then, you know, you've got a much wider range of motion and you're more likely to um, have more artistic original brush strokes. Okay. So, and you're, somebody asked, you're painting in oil or acrylic? You're painting in oil, right? Yes, it is oil. Okay, so I've redefined some of the uh, darks there. And I'm going to just kind of establish my line here a little bit. You're blocking the camera. Oh, sorry. Getting my nose in it. Okay, and so now I'm going to come in with the uh, ground plane here. So as far as um, the scumble goes, I can paint into this as much as I want or as little. I could have left this whole thing just kind of moody and scumbled without redefining, and it would have been a different painting. Uh -huh. But that's really not what I'm after. So I'm going in and, you know, repainting some of it. Now, once this all dries... I may come in and scumble over it again with the same tone or a different tone, just trying to, you know, it's a push and pull. Okay. And then if I don't like this, since the painting underneath it was dry, I can just put this in some Gamsol and wipe all the paint off of it, and I'll be back to my original painting. All so, right. So there's really nothing lost. So I would encourage everybody, you know, to play around with this. So... So I'm going to leave that just right here right now, and I'm going to start a different painting. Okay, what is the dark color that you used? Uh, somebody wanted to know. Um, that is basically uh, Cad Red Light and uh, Ultramarine and a little bit of white and maybe just a touch of Cad Yellow just to kind of neutralize it a little bit. Okay. Uh, hello to the United Kingdom, Sussex. Hello to Ireland. Hello to Italy. Uh, let's see who else make sure that's why uh, British Columbia Idaho Falls it's kind of like a foreign country South Africa <laughs> I'm going to get somebody's going to yell at me now they're going to send me a rude comment because I was nasty uh, okay that's uh, why I like to have you guys put where you're from then I can tell everybody Munich all right hello Munich the gates Hello, Christine Hagen. All right. This is fun. Alaska, Homer, Alaska. Wow. We have artists all over the world watching. This is so much fun. And people who are who are new to this also. Okay, what are we gonna do here? Okay, so um this right here was a, I, I did a little plain air study down on the beach. And I, I kind of like the design of it. I like the energy of it. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to take this. I'm going to enlarge it, but I'm going to try different color palettes. So okay. I, I wanted to go with something neutral. And I used a palette. I used ochre, uh, cobalt, and um, like Venetian red to start with it. So because I wanted to get a lot of pretty grays. All right. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to cover this whole thing just like I did the other one with a little bit more of a yellow tone because I really like these yellow harmonies in here. And but I want this cloud just I want the values closer together and to have it more of a solid form. <clears throat> and then all of that, when, when I stumble it, will translate down into the water. I also don't like the way uh, the tops of these waves, it's just too broken up. So that will help to bring it all together because the lights will get darker and the darks will get lighter when you okay. scum. So <clears throat> hey, Mary, do me a favor. Yes. We have a very special guest watching, Angela from Italy. It's her birthday. Would you say happy oh. birthday to Angela? Uh, 
Ciao, Angela. Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good. You speak Italian. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> I wish. Oh. I actually tried to learn on Duolingo Italian, but when I would go to Italy, I guess my Italian was so bad that all the Italians would just speak to me in English, so I quit studying. Well, at least you tried. I did try. Hello, Australia. Hello, New <laughs> Brunswick. Hello, Norway. I'm, I'm part Australian. My mom was from Australia. Outstanding. Okay, this is, I, I just love this part of it. It is Very, it's fun. It is the uh, Don't ruin it. <laughs> well, remember, you can't ruin it because the paint is dry. So if you put this tone on and you don't like it, just wipe it all off. Hello, Bulgaria. Wow. Man. Now, you guys, do us a favor and, and uh, either like or share. That way your friends will see it, and they'll discover us, too. This is a big, giant secret. Okay, so you guys can see this is really pretty opaque. Yep. <clears throat> Hello, Hazel in New Zealand. Okay. Okay. Judith is asking, is there somewhere we can ask general questions? Judith, just put it in the comments and I'll try to pass them on. And also Mary will come back in sometime tonight after the replays and start answering questions. I'd well, be happy to. Thank you, Mary. Okay. So now comes the discovery. And it's a big ochery blob. It's a foggy day. It's a very foggy day. <laughs> and really, there are some paintings, um, you know, sometimes you don't know, you know, when you're experimenting, you have to take things too far to know how far you can take something. Right. And so as, um, as Scott Christensen says, you've got to be willing to lose your best work to, you know, improve on your artwork. Somebody asked, could you also scumble by pacing the, placing the paint on the rag and wiping over the canvas with a rag? Oh, absolutely. It doesn't yeah, matter. You can, also, you can also spot scumble, right? Sure, absolutely. Um, so I might come back in, you know, after I've kind of repainted some of the areas and say, you know what? I liked it better when... This was a, a, a flatter cloud without the lights and the darks. So, you know, there's no end to how many layers of scumble that you can put on it. Here's a question. Have you ever had a problem with the paint scraping off easily going over an older painting that has been reworked like this? Sometimes I find the surface becomes fragile. Um, not really. What comes to mind is maybe just... Uh, a palette knife painting, you know, where the paint was very thick. But other than that, I don't think I've ever had a problem with it. All right. There are a lot of people who tuned in late. She's mixed her paint. It's opaque paint. It's usually a yellow with a white, or in this case it is, plus some liquid. Yeah, lots of liquid. painting medium. Okay. So now I really like the way the sky looks. I, I really like that effect on the sky. I like the way that we've got some lost edges here because the the light got a little darker and the darks got lighter, which is, you know, one of the effects of the scumble. Um, and it's really brought some color harmony to the painting. So now the question is, where should I take it from here? Uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to redefine some of the highlights in the sky here. I'm not sure I'm going to do anything with the darker part of the cloud. I kind of like the vibration that's going on. Question, would it work with Gamvar, which is a varnish? Uh, you know, I haven't used Gamvar. Um, I think that the varnish part, you know, like if I want to do this many times to scumble over it, 
I would worry about putting the varnish there and it drying and cracking as you have multiple layers. Um, yeah. So, hmm. that's, I'm, you know, I'm not sure of that, but I would be worried about that. Okay, so... Ina is asking, where do I find the podcast? If you go to outdoorpainter.com or if you just search Plen Air Podcast, wherever you get your podcast, Apple, Spotify, et cetera, you'll find it in there. And search Mary Garish. Mary, do you have it on your website? Um, I believe so. I'm, uh, I have a, a nice young woman who's a stay-at-home mom who does my website for me. So I'm pretty sure she's got a link to it there. Okay, she's probably the one commenting because she put your website in the comments. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's probably... Hi, Mallory. Hi, Mallory. <laughs> oh, I love, I'm loving that. Well, thank you. It... Uh... You know, I, I don't say this very often, but I have one of your paintings in my, my extensive collection. <laughs> You, you've got it right next to the Vermeer, right? I do, yes. <laughs> How'd you know? <clears throat> I actually met a man recently, and he told me he was an art collector. I said, <clears throat> what's the high highlight of your collection? He said, I have a Vermeer. <laughs> and, and he was totally serious. Wow. <clears throat> okay, so like this highlight here? It's just sticking out to me. So I'm going to soften the edges with my nice little handy paper towel. All things could be tools. Yes, absolutely. <clears throat> Unfortunately, too often my, uh, my fingers are my tools. Somebody asked, Sam asked, could you use, uh, or somebody asked, could you use tools other than liquid? That's Donna. Yeah, you know, I think that probably uh, Neo, Neo McGilp uh, yeah. would work fine. Um, you know, <clears throat> both of those, the nice thing is, is they, they make the paint dry quicker. And so, like, tomorrow, I could probably come back in if I wanted to just totally rescumble if, you know, if my lights weren't too thick and repaint it. You know, because like I said, it has to be totally a totally dry surface yeah. to do this technique on. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, you just get a, a big. I, I think you could use a gel medium too. You could use something yeah. like Gamblin has a gel medium or a uh, Rubeloff or uh, what do they call it? Oleo gel. Yes. Uh, you know, there's a lot of variations on that. I think you could use some of those. Okay. So I'm just trying to get some nice vibrations going on in the sky here. You know, with the light bouncing around. Yep. Hello, Norway. Hello, Scotland. And so see this pinker tone here. You're starting to cover your... There we go. Sorry. This pinker tone here. Hard to paint sideways, isn't it? it? It is. It's really hard to, you know, get in there. But um, so see this pinker tone is the same value as the more yellow tone. And so what that's going to do, it's going to allow this whole shape here to stay together as one shape. Okay, we don't want to break it, break it up too much. And so what I'm going to do now is probably come down into the, the uh, where the sky meets the ocean. Here's a question. It says, I've painted over paintings that are completely dry and found the paint would scrape off easily with my fingernail after months of drying. I would like to know what causes that. It, you're, it's your fingernail. <laughs> <laughs> I would have to agree with you there, Eric. <laughs> uh. Okay, so as this develops, you know, what, what I like a lot about the scumbling are kind of all the lost edges. So the question is, how much do you want to redefine the edges and how many of them do you want to leave as just lost? So, and you know, that's uh, part of it's just your personal taste. Somebody said they've heard that liquid cannot be removed 
once dry um, years later if they want to clean a painting. But you, you wouldn't want that to be removed. Well, and I mean, in what I've seen is just using gam salt, you can get most of it off. Okay. Um, so, but if you're but a hundred years from now, if your if your varnish yellows, then they, you want the varnish to be able to take be taken off, but not necessarily the painting medium. Right. So I, I like uh, I think it was at the plain air convention. Huang Ho was uh, talking and he was asked by somebody, I think it was a, one of those fat over lean questions. And uh, his answer was, well, if one of my paintings, if it yellows or something, he goes, if it's still here in a hundred years, I guess that they'll pay to have a professional restorer take care of it. <laughs> so, okay. So I'm going to go back into some of these darks here and kind of hit them again. And so when I'm doing this, I try to make every brush stroke a little unique and different. Uh, the other thing with this painting is it's, I was pretty much going for one third light and two thirds dark. Okay. Uh, you know, how do you make those decisions? Do you make that when you first start it? Um, well, okay, this is another, okay. So, this is how I kind of started that painting that's behind it. So I did this with the three Portland grays by Gamblin. Mm -hmm. They have a Portland gray light, Portland gray medium, and a Portland gray dark. And so this was the dark, that's the light, and here are the medium tones in there. So when I did this painting, uh, it was, it's just so much easier to see the design if you take the color out of it and you're basically just doing a, a, a grayscale. Yeah. And, and a value so, study. Yes. And, you know, you don't have to do a big like this. I just did this, you know, for the demonstration and everything. But, you know, if you take a, like a 12 by 16 or 11 by 14 and basically break it down into, you know, like, uh, six smaller paintings. That's a great way to get a lot of work done on design. And these Portland grays are just so nice and easy. So, hey, hey Mary. Yes. Oh, go ahead. Hold that up. I'll 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 tell you in a minute. Okay. So these are the Portland grays, uh, right out of the tube. Okay. So here are the Portland grays, but I've made them. I've added white to. Well, it's the first two. I didn't even use the dark one because I wanted high key. And so I added white to the lightest one and then white to the middle one. And then that's the middle one. So that would be a nice high key painting. And then there's a low key painting. Uh, you know, this was the uh, middle tone. This was a little bit of white added to the darkest Portland gray. And then that's the darkest Portland gray. So it's nice to like take just like take this scene and do uh, you know a middle tone, a high key, and a low key, small little paintings of the scene, and see see which way you you want it to go. So what are you going to do next on this? Okay, so next on this, I'm going to redefine the highlights. So those are the things that you tend to. Uh, well, first I'm going to finish my darks in here. I'm going to put a few more, and so the highlights and the the darks are the ones that you tend to lose the most right. when you stumble. So we'll go back in and redefine some of them. That looks like a purplish tone. It, it is. It is um, probably cad red light, ultramarine, and tiny bit of white and probably a little bit of yellow. Okay. Oh, somebody would like the, ex what does it mean, high key or low key? Okay, so on a value scale, uh, this is probably, this is right out of the tube, the Portland Grays. This is probably like a, a three, maybe a six and an eight. Um, and so high key means that the tones are lighter. So this range here is probably more like a, a, a two, 
a four and a five. And then the low key are the dark, darker ranges. So this would probably be more like a five, a seven and an eight. So while we were, while you guys were on your uh, break there, I went ahead and I've worked some purpley tones, you know, yellow and purple, you know, nice compliments there. And so I've worked some cooler purpley tones in to kind of resonate back and forth, uh, kind of into my scumble. And so typically what I'll do is I'll play around like that. I'll leave it. And then I might decide, well, you know, I think it's too much purple. I might come back tomorrow and re-scumble over the surface. Okay. So, so that's basically what I've done there. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the grayscale painting just to show you what you can do with like a phthalo, a phthalo uh, tone, certainly neutralized because phthalo is so saturated. Um, and I think I used, I think I used Indian red. So now I'm going to just cover this with the phthalo tone and see if we get like the feel of a nocturne. I love all the play. Yes. You know, we're just playing around. And now I have to tell you, Eric, that this is my favorite color. Your favorite color? Yeah, as far as like what I like to wear. You know, I live in Florida. Yeah. So this is just a Florida color. Yeah, that, I call that bathwater green. <laughs> now, when I mix this up, it was fun. I grayed it with the transparent red oxide. And so, you know, it's its complement, you know, transparent red oxide obviously has a lot of red in it hey do you have a bottle of liquid right there because somebody asked to show the bottle so they can see it hold it still hold it a little closer to the camera okay right there hold still liquid original from windsor newton okay there you go good right. and by the way it's not stumble it's scumble s-c-u-m-b-l-e Yes, Anybody and, want to try it? Yeah. And uh, if you try to type that in, it will auto correct. Yeah, that's right. Hello, Bulgaria. I mean, excuse me, Romania. Welcome. We love having you here. Awesome. Okay. So we pretty much got, and you know, that was just uh, the three Portland Grays under there. So it's not like, you know, I spent a lot of time painting that. Now, do you use an older brush that you don't mind ruining for scumbling? Because somebody said they cringe using a good brush. Well, uh, certainly you can use the cheap brushes. You can use anything. You can, you know, use the cheap brushes from Home Depot, you know, because it's not exactly like you're, you know, doing delicate work. Okay. So see, I really already, I can tell I really like that tone. Oh, yeah, I do too. Yeah, it just gives the feeling of nighttime. Yeah, so that's a phthalo green mixed with a little uh, transparent red oxide and white. Yes. And so it just, see, I just love the effect of that. Yeah, I mean, it, what's, if you put the two side by side, you can just see, you'll, you'll be able to see how you basically take the same painting and, and you've created two different feels. Hard, hard to see that, but yeah. Yeah, really nice. Okay, let's let you continue. You've got about, oh, about maybe 10, 12 minutes left. Oh, okay. Okay, so now that I've got this kind of nocturnish kind of feel, um, I'm going to wipe out probably with just a little turpentine and get back some of the darks down here in the foreground. I haven't taken it all off down here, but just probably 90% of it. And do you want to talk about darks uh, and how they recede? Darks yeah. going forward? So your darkest darks should be in the foreground. And then as you recede, you can see some darks here, but they're they're lighter in value. Right. 
So as you recede, like even with the sky, so you can tell, you know, this cloud is much darker than these clouds back here. So they're receding into the distance. So the further away, the lights get darker and the darks get lighter, which is the same thing that happens when you scumble. All right. Terrific. And that's what gives you the, the uh, aerial perspective feeling. And then also the colors in the foreground, uh, you know, this is very much a gray painting, but the colors in the foreground should be more saturated and darker than in the distance. All right. So, and typically too, if you, the other thing with aerial perspective is color. So, you know, the three colors, uh, primary colors are yellow, red, and blue. And so the first color to drop off with aerial perspective as you go back in the distance is yellow. Right. Okay. And good. Then the second is red. So that's why like the Smoky Mountains with distance, it just looks blue. Okay. Okay. So now I'm going to come in and I'm going to try to, you know, put some interest in the sky here. And I basically took the color that um, I used to scumble and I added a little bit of cadmium lemon light and uh, white. And so I'm going to come in here kind of right off uh, center and start painting into this with some lighter values. Somebody said they were a little bit afraid to try this because they don't know their mediums. I think a good way to do that is just make up some small panels with a, a little dummy painting and then just practice using different mediums. Yeah, I mean, actually, it, it's so much fun, you know, especially if you just take old paintings. That's when I teach a workshop. I tell people, you know, bring some old paintings to the workshop that you don't like and let's start playing with them. I mean, what do you have to lose? Most people just, you know, stick them in the garbage and throw them out. So, um, and that way, if you have an old painting, you don't have anything invested right. and you're not afraid to play. Good idea. Okay. So this is that same tone that I put in here, but with some blue added to it. So that, you know, the further away we get from the light source, which is around in here, you know, the cooler it gets. So see here, I'm actually kind of using the way I'm laying the paint in, I'm almost kind of scumbling the paint in here too, just to give it that lost edge feeling, you know, just very gently. Uh, the other thing with the skies, vertical strokes are really nice. Um, you know, like everybody, when they go to paint clouds, they're always, you know, trying to make them all horizontal. If you look into the sky, there's a lot of verticality to the sky. Okay. Especially when you're talking about from the horizon all the way up to the zenith, you're going to see a lot of color bouncing around and the vertical brush strokes really help to give that feeling. So see, I, I don't know if this is showing up well, but you know, the, the tone under it is kind of almost a little bit of a, it's very subtle, but it's almost like a little bit of a purpley gray. And that's from the Portland gray showing through. Oh, okay. So I think it gives a very nice uh, color harmony. I'll get in a little bit closer here. Maybe it'll show up better. But you know, those are very subtle differences but they're very important to give that push-pull. You know, uh, a warm and a cool of the same value bouncing around there in the sky. Terrific. Hello, Netherlands. Oh, you have some. You have a world-famous artist, George Van Hook, is watching you, Mary. No oh. pressure. Hi, George. <laughs> 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 no, no comments from the peanut gallery, please. George is the most positive man you'll ever meet in your life. He's so oh. fun. Well, we like positive. Yeah. Especially when we're doing a demo. Okay, so here at the horizon line, again, I don't have a lot of paint on my brush at this point. You know, we're looking for very subtle changes.
And I think I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit more of that highlight in here. It would be real tempting to overdo that too, wouldn't it? Well, I'm really good at that. You know, it's that uh, <laughs> if a little is good, a lot is better. Yeah. But I, I then I have to keep reminding myself that less is more. Yeah. Well, as, as C.W. Mundy would say, you can only have one star in your painting. Well, that's right. Or as uh, John Burton likes to call it, your diva. Your diva. Yeah, I like that. I'm like, what's your diva, right? So right here, my diva is kind of right around in here with that light bouncing around. So now I'm going to put a little bit of that light, you know, bouncing so that it looks like it's rain coming from here. You know, very, very subtle. So how much time do we have left there? Oh, you got five minutes. I'll give you five. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, demo. Okay, I'm gonna put this down, but you guys get the feel of that phthalo with the uh, transparent red oxide. So now I've just got a really. I, I did this at the last minute. You're very well prepared. We're we're, we're all very impressed. We're all giving you thumbs <laughs> up and hearts. Okay. Ooh, so, la la. So this was a older beach painting, and I just pulled it out yesterday, and I'm like, you know what? I really. This is a little hazy. It's got a lot of wax in here and everything. And, but I just, I'm like, eh, it just wasn't lighting my flame. Yeah. So I'm, I decided I was going to scumble it and see where it takes it. So I'm going to scumble this with the same orangey tone that I did on that marsh scene at the very beginning. Somebody's going, no, don't ruin it. <laughs> That's Joe. Joe Aubrey said that. Hey, no guts. Okay, no everybody's no. asking me to ask you to do a video. Oh, well, thank you. I would love to do a video. All right. This is how things get done here. We'll just okay, it's a deal. Well, we like it. Eric, you're you're the man. Okay. So I mean, okay, so you know, obviously this is a pretty garish tone. That's all right. We're anxious to see it. You got to pull it off in four minutes, though. Okay, I'm there. Wow, that's that's scary. Isn't it? It's so much fun. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know we all get a little invested in our paintings, don't we? We do. Uh, Elaine Miller says, gasp. <laughs> okay. Sam Hansen says he wants to attend one of your workshops. They're on your website, I'm sure, which is marygarishfineart.com. Well, yeah, it's a little thin right now because we're not sure, you know, with all this COVID when they're all going to start. I'm supposed to uh, teach a workshop before Plain Air Roanoke in the middle of May. I think it's the 16th and 17th. And then I'm teaching a workshop in, uh, in northern Georgia through uh, Art Loft, which is on the, the uh, website. And okay. I'm doing that uh, middle of March if, you know, if things go okay, see, I'm already liking this. Wow, what a difference! Oh, just so quickly, transformational. It just brings the light in. Yeah, and it it just, I don't know. You can almost you know feel the humidity. Yeah. And uh, that's that's what I love about that. You know, oh. it's I, I took a painting that I was like, ah, eh, you know, just wasn't really feeling it, and uh, now I can wipe out here and there, rediscover. Wow. Come back tomorrow, you know. I love it. It's done. I mean, that quickly. Mary, we have our first visitor from Palestine. Oh, wonderful. Gerar Bakri. Welcome, Gerar. Okay. Well, why don't you come back on camera, or do you have more to do on that? You got to lay a little more color into that? No, I think I'm just going to leave that very heavy atmospheric feel. Okay, I think we should do an auction for that painting. Do I hear? <laughs> I won't embarrass you. You'll have you'll have so many people bidding. We don't want to make them, we don't want to make them fight for it. Mary, you are an excellent teacher. Well, thank you. And we have learned a lot today. Uh, I, the biggest thing is have no fear. Yes, have no fear. Yeah, Chewy even liked it. Chewy's like, <laughs> right, what is she doing over there? We could use Chewy to mop up the paint. 
Oh, there you go. It looks like she'd be a, a very good one. She's nice and fuzzy. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, Mary, uh, what will we find on your website if we go there and, and poke around? Um, you know, basically just what I've mentioned, uh, it's, uh, you know, plain air Roanoke, you know, going to do a two day workshop there and then middle of March in uh, Northern Georgia from the art loft gallery, all that should be on the website. And, uh, hopefully, you know, sometime in the future when we're all vaccinated, you know, there'll be some overseas workshops too, which are my favorite things. Um, and, and where can we buy your paintings? Um, that's on the website also, um, uh, John M. Stringer Gallery in Vero Beach, um, the Karen Hewitt in uh, Charleston, and uh, right now those are my two main galleries. Great. Outstanding. Okay, and they're listed on the website. Mary, uh, thank you so much. Everybody, thumbs up, applause, and shares for Mary Garish. Mary, you're a rock star. Thank you for doing this. I want to remind everybody to go search Plein Air Podcast with Mary's name and listen to that because there's a fascinating story of how she got here and what she used to do, which is pretty cool. So you have to go there to find it. Mary, thank you.